Uh, I'm Tina Pippin. I teach religion and human rights at Agnes Scott College in Decatur, Georgia. Sarita? Hi, my name is Sarita Shukla, um, and I teach uh, courses in multicultural education, learning, culture, and identity at the School of Educational Studies, University of Washington, Bothell, uh, United States. My name is Alex Fink. I teach and do work in our youth studies program at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States. And I am Mahabeli, uh, the American University in Cairo. And today I'm taking one again from the Theater of the Press uh, workshop that I did with uh, Teresa, that Teresa Ronquillo and T Tika Sears were facilitating. Um, and this one is image, well, it's a kind of image theater where in image theater participants are encouraged to use their bodies rather than language to portray and communicate realities. And this kind of gives, allows multiple perspectives and, and just sort of, uh, you can have critical group reflection afterwards on, on why these particular movements represent those particular uh, situations and things like that. And so the one I'm gonna show you is statue sculpture tableau, um, used interchangeably for this activity. Again, it's based on Augusta Wall's Theater of the Oppressed Words called Image of the Word. And the steps are basically, for at some point, everyone will turn off their camera and the facilitator says a word or a theme. And then each person who's ready to use their body to represent the idea will turn on their camera and represent the idea. For the first time, um, so, each person does it one at a time and we keep building. And then in the end, you know, if you look at the, the scene with all of us with our cameras on, you'll see something and that's our, our tableau. And then the facilitator can comment on the tableau, maybe make critical, or we can all reflect on what came out of the tableau and see, you know, how does this connect to our thoughts on things and whatever. So there are two ways to do it. You can start off by frozen images, like just tell people to, to give one image of just a frozen movement, or you can do it with actual movement, like a moving image, but it's a repeated action. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start us off with a simple one. Uh, like if we said, um, um, why don't you represent what the word beach means to you? So everyone turn off your camera and the way Zoom works with the recording is it's not gonna show anyone. And then when someone has an idea for how they want to represent beach, uh, they, they, can, um, they can start uh, turning on their camera. And for this one, just to get us going, I'll start first. And this is gonna be a still image, not a moving image, okay? So I'll turn off my video for now. And then very silently, all of us are silent. Okay. All right. So we can stop now. And I think Tina was lying down sunbathing, right? Yes. And I think Sarita and I were both swimming. And what was Alex doing? I was throwing a ball. Oh, it was ball. I was trying to come ball. up with something that wasn't the same as everybody is. Right. And it's, it's difficult when you're the last person to turn it on. Obviously, if you had a larger class, it would be even, even harder. And I think when we did it, they didn't make sure that everyone participated, but they made sure there was a good critical number, like six or seven, before we stopped and reflected. Um, one of the things I noticed is that Sarita's was a moving one, even though this one was going to be a frozen image. Some of these things are harder to do as a frozen image, right? Because I was trying to swim, but I don't know if it showed that that was what I was trying to do. Um, so, so maybe the frozen is not so easy. Maybe the moving images are actually easier to do. Uh, so then the next one, uh, so the next one you can do with something actually conceptual related to your course. Uh, so a, a lot more complex, but what I think, um, it would be interesting, I think maybe as a reflection on a new reading or something to see how people re reacted to it. Uh, but we'll do it about something that I think all of us are aware of. And we can talk about, um, online or hybrid teaching. And for this one, rather than a frozen image, um, it would be a moving image, but just a repeated action, you know? So just like do the same thing over and over. It doesn't have to be hitting the screen. I don't know why that one came to me, but you know. 
<laughs> okay, so I'm going to uh, mute and turn my camera off. For this one, I think sometimes they played music. I'm not sure if it was for this particular activity that they made, but the music helps with getting the rhythm going. Um, but I don't know how you get the music going without sharing your screen, because that's usually how you get the music. I think maybe they were just playing music in their own home or something. So we'll do it this time without music, but you can do it without. Oh yeah, just on a different device or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna turn my camera off and then whoever has an idea for an action can turn their camera on. Maha, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> now that is the thing that everyone's been saying for the past six months. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did everyone get a chance to see what others were doing? Does anyone want to comment on what that was? What um, so I saw different actions that kind of I, I could relate with all of the actions actually, um, like typing, and then you were, you know, like responding to someone on the side. Um, and then Tina was doing her, her, her thing with that too. And I was like, well, usually when I'm working, I'll have a cup of like, you know, like coffee or like something by my side and I'm like drinking and working. And so to me that all um, that's that enca encapsulated my own experience with online work so beautifully, just everything that we all were doing here. Anyone else have any comments on how that was? Well, I appreciate I it. Oh, go ahead, Tina. Oh, I was checking to see if students were needed to be readmitted. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Alex. I was just going to say, I felt like that captured the individual, like that, that like the feeling as an individual of participating in online and hybrid learning, it, it didn't capture for me the like, the collective or like the interactive experience of it, which was interesting. It's just, it feels like very difficult as a solo person or even as like this community of people just to represent that interactivity. Mm or the relational aspect of it that's still there. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if we want to try. Do you want to try to go one more time and just go live right away? You don't have to turn off your camera, but try to re-represent online learning and try to capture what Alex just mentioned right there of trying to show that there's a social aspect, e even with a similar action to the one you were taking but change it up a little bit to show that there's actually someone else on the other side of the screen. So I'll give you an example of how I would change mine. So mine was like this, but I was totally ignoring the person on the screen. So what I'm gonna do this time is say, oh, one minute, and I talk to someone, I come back. And that shows that there's another person on the screen. Otherwise I could be just typing on my own and just talking to someone and coming back, right? So um, let's, let's all try that, okay? Let's see what, how we would do ours differently trying to show that some kind of interaction with the screen, okay? Mine is hard because I have to look away to do it. So I'm gonna just do this part. Okay, silent now. Okay. Good, I like that. So I can see that I think you're all sort of talking or listening. Um, but but the piece that Alex mentioned, um, so it's still each one of us doing our own individual things, sort of like how we um, get into these spaces. Um, but the other activities that we did, they were more sort of trying to get you know people who are in the Zoom room together and uh, connecting with each other. So yeah, that that um, that that is true. 
Yeah, yeah I that's true. I think this one's, I was just going to say this one's, I think, more conceptual about what does online learning mean more than a community building in the way that the others were. You're right. I agree. Tina, what were you going to say? Oh, well, you could use this and uh, it's the kind of thing Goal does. I think Teresa was um, going there. Uh, um, you build the image and then from the image, you add a noise and you start to build a machine. Are y'all familiar with the machine? I forgot that one. You're right. You want to try it with the machine? Yeah, you add a noise um, or you say one word that describes how you're feeling or one word that, you know, is uh, part of the scene. Uh, I guess it depends yeah. on what, right? Yeah, um, and that's a way of like building the thing together and, and sort of cohes making it more cohesive. Though yeah. again, Zoom is not great with that, but there are only four of us. It might actually work out okay. Yeah, and I think uh, either we could, I mean, there are two ways to do this with our images like we had, or um, like say Alex starts us out and then we add on to his. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, either way, I think. Oh, that's a good idea. Hmm? So, then, so then one person starts and then the other people kind of, uh, they bring in right. other activities that kind of connect with what's happening. Yeah, oh, okay. so we're building an online teaching machine. And, um, you know, we could add, well, what we add or something different, depending on, you know, mm. the start point. And, and I don't know how e easy it is to do machine on Zoom, but mm. where... Let's give it a try and see what happens. I think the audio won't work very great, but it'll, it'll do something. Okay. Uh, Alex, do you want to start? Like yours is maybe if you're just the typing sound is probably doable. So we're going to skip the audio part though. Oh, you want me to like have that? Yeah. Sound? Can you okay. can you actually do? Maybe you can use sure. one of your hands and use the other one to actually type to make that sound. Maybe. Or does it sure. have to be a sound from? I don't think it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be a sound from your mouth, right? It could be just no, a sound from your environment. It's a word like. Uh, yeah. Too much. I was going to say one sec. I was going to say one sec. Like so, if I if I start, I could start it. I'm like, one sec. One sec, and then someone else can do something, and then I'll say yeah. one sec in between. Yeah, and I could go, come back, come back. One sec. <laughs> one sec. Okay. Yeah, and then we get a rhythm to the machine. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, so one sec. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? One sec. Come back. Come back. One sec. Back. You were saying something? One sec. Back. Come back. Yeah. One sec. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I kind of like that. That was fun. And that yeah. was more cohesive. I think that sort of addresses what Sarita was uh, feeling the disconnect, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And then bit. we debrief about what we were feeling. Yeah. What were you feeling when this was happening? How'd that feel? Oh, just just the energy, the drain of energy that I spend online that I don't have in a regular classroom. Mm. Because of all the, you know, the technology, the people coming in and out, just the trying to adapt different pedagogical mm. models and like have a pedagogy of grace in the middle of that with all the stuff my students are going through plus we're dealing with you know black lives matter and abolish the police in my ethics class <laughs> and mm -hmm. all these heavy issues and it just kind of comes crashing down and then somebody you know i have two or three students who drop out and i have, have to get them back they want to be readmitted but they're in breakout rooms and i don't see the readmit and they're texting me and you know <laughs> so just chaos and hopefully yeah. some creation out of that chaos. But and it gets so it's so focused. We it's interesting. We still kind of captured the like technical focus of it. <laughs> and I was hoping to get in with my with my clacking. Uh, like, how are you? Oh, I feel like that's like a big conversation that I'm having. But it didn't. Uh... It's funny that in the technicality that we all were capturing, it was like hard to even fit that in. Um, which is a funny like encapsulation of how some of it feels. Mm. Just what yeah. you were describing, Tina, like that focus on 
so much of the technical piece. Do you, you want to try redoing it one more time? You do it and show and, and add mm -hmm. an element of care above what you were doing before. Yeah, and then does it like you, you were like, saying? I wanted to fit something in. We right. could re do it one more time. Well, and the question is, do we make like metaphorically? Do we make space for it? Like, do we pause all the technical pieces to get the "How are you?" in, or or does it have to be layered on top of the technical challenges that we're all encountering? Would it be Would it be authentically representing what online learning is, or would it be an aspirational thing? What, what and I that, that's that's in itself a question, I think. Go ahead. What I was thinking was um, going back to what Tina was saying, a couple of things that I've been wondering about the machine. Um, so I need to understand that more fully, um, what, what that means here. Um, the other thing that I'm kind of wondering about is um, when, when we do this, um, this in action when we when we enacted this whole scene, um, I, I really felt this sheer sense of exhaustion that I often feel after a Zoom meeting, and I think it it really captured that. But then getting it back to Maha's point, um, do we want to do it metaphorically, where where it is, where you know how are you? Is it enmeshed within this action, within this how we were enacting it? Or is it something aspirational? So something to think about. Well, I'm looking at one of the things that they did in, in Teresa. Oh, I'm going to say in Teresa's workshop, they tried to turn it into a positive That's and right. to redo it in a more positive way because we all gave some kind of exhaustion or multitasking or something. I think that helps turn it into a positive note. Right. Um, do you want to try that so that we end in a positive note as well? Is that what you were going to say, Tina? Yeah, that. And she also said, um, uh, from the image to say, what do you need right now? Mm. Is a question about that, you know, like Alex, what do you need? You know, uh, Ma, what do you need? Um, and then the, how are you feeling about the image? And then turn it, she did on the count of three, turn that negative into a positive, mm. which is really a stretch for me right now, which is uh, an yeah. issue. And then asking the audience, uh, the spectators, um, you know, what do you see and feel? Because if there, if this was done in a, right. a group in a larger class, right? And yeah, that's a lot easier for this, the audience to reflect than us because we're busy doing our action as well. Yeah, yeah. But I like, yeah. The well, let's, that works well, I think. Well, let's try this. Let's try a, a, an action that would make this a, a less exhausting situation or a more positive situation for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then repeat it and then see how that goes. Okay. So, but without sound, I think it's easier to focus on the action. Interestingly, are you guys ready? Three, two, one. Okay. I think Sarita actually went to sleep there. <laughs> Were you stretching? <laughs> I, just, I just had to just like rest because you're constantly just like hunching and you're just trying to look at people's faces, just just like lying down for a little bit, even on my chair and just, you know, taking a break, even if it's momentarily, it, it really yeah. does. Um, we're getting ready for the quarter here and with all the classes and like how Tina was saying, I, it just resonated with me a whole lot, everything yeah. that's happening right now. And um, so, yeah. I thought it was really interesting that Tina went backwards and Alex came forwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was saying welcome and trying ah. to just welcome whenever. Yeah, it's it's a more laid back welcome than welcome. You know? Yeah. You've got yeah. to come back. <laughs> For mine, one of the things I noticed is that I just sometimes really get need to get this off my ears. Yeah, um, I got this one because it's a noise canceling thing, but it's heavy. And that in itself hurts my body, you know, so just taking it off. If I'm going to make I need, I, instead of just doing this, why not just take the entire thing off? Yeah. And focus on whatever, focus on this on its own and that on its own, which is that is actually my daughter 
which who's not in the room right now, but I'm in her room. <laughs> yeah, what I would have done if you were doing it in person, I'd probably just like walk, which is what usually helps me, like if I take breaks. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we do that on Zoom, right? Um, so that's where well, that's you would actually just get out of the screen altogether, right? Oh, okay. I mean, that, that is something powerful and meaningful that, oh, I'm actually not here right now. Mm -hmm. And that, that is something worth saying, you know, not just take a break and take this off, but you can still see me. I'm actually taking a break. So I actually, you know, completely walk away. Oh, okay. In, a, in an actual room, you could actually walk out of the room rather than just, you know, give people your back or whatever. It depends on the context and what's acceptable, I guess. Um, but like the, the issue here is that when you walk out, then you can't see what's, what else is going on, right? So yeah. Any other comments on this one? Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. Thanks everyone. <laughs>